أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Lesson number 222 Surah Al-Ahzab Ayah number 45 to 48 Ya ayyuhal nabiyyu O Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Inna arsalnaka Indeed we have sent you Shahidan As a witness Wa mubashiran And a bringer of good news وَنَذِيرًا and also as a warner وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ بِإِذْنِهِ and one who invites to Allah by his permission وَسِرَاجًا مُنِرًا and an illuminating lamp these ayat they tell us about the characteristics of the Prophet ﷺ many times they are famous people you want to know who they are what characteristics they possessed, what work they did, how to describe them, how to define them. This is what describes the Prophet ﷺ. These ayat tell us who he was, why he came, what he did, what was his role, what was his mission. That, Ya ayyuhan nabiyyu, O Prophet ﷺ. He is being addressed by the title of an nabi what does that show? That he was a Nabi. So his first characteristic of Nubuwa. Inna arsalnaka. Indeed we have sent you. Arsala yursilu irsal. Who is the one who is sent? Rasul. So what does it show? The second characteristic that he possessed was of Risala. That he was a Rasul. We have sent you shahidan as a shahid. As a witness. Shahid from the root letters Sheen Ha Dal. And the word Shahid has two meanings. Linguistically, it has two meanings. First of all, it is understood as Mukhbir. What does it mean by Mukhbir? One who informs. So, for instance, a person witnessed a particular scene. So then what happens? He goes and informs about it. He saw it. He goes and informs about it. So what does that make him? A shahid. What's the role that he's playing? Of a mukhbir. So the first meaning of shahid is mukhbir. The second meaning of shahid is hakim. Meaning one who judges. One who decides. What does it mean by that? How can shahid mean hakim? Can you think of any evidence from the Qur'an which shows that the meaning of shahada can be of judgment? Somewhere in the Qur'an where the word shahada has been used for judgment, for decision. I'll give you a hint, a big hint. Surah Yusuf. وَالشَّهِدَ شَاهِدٌ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا So shahida shahidun. What does that mean? That someone made a decision. Right? Someone made a decision from her house, from her family, from her household, that if the shirt is ripped from the behind, then such is the case. And if the shirt is ripped from the front, then such is the case. They decided this. So the second meaning of shahid is hakim. Now what does it mean by this? That inna arsalnaka shahidan. We have sent you as a shahid. If we take the meaning of shahid to be mukhbir, then what does it mean by this? That one who informs people about who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One who informs people about what Allah has revealed. One who informs people about what Allah has revealed. So he was a witness to the fact that Allah is one. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. He was a witness to the fact that Allah is one. His oneness, his tawheed. And this is the message that was delivered by all of the messengers of Allah. Isn't it so? All of them informed their people about the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a mukhbir, he will also inform about the people on the day of judgment. What does it mean by that? That he will bear witness for them or against them on the day of judgment. What witness? that the message was delivered to them. The message was delivered to them. On the day of judgment, 
he will bear witness against his nation that he delivered the message to them and not just his nation but also the previous nations that the message was delivered to them by their messengers we learn from the hadith which is reported in Bukhari Abu Sa'id al-Khudri narrated that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Nuh alayhi salam will be brought before Allah on the day of resurrection and he will be asked did you convey the message of Allah and he will reply yes O Lord and then Nuh alayhi salam's nation will be asked did he convey Allah's message to you and they will reply no warner came to us then Nuh alayhi salam will be asked who are your witnesses who are your witnesses who can testify to the fact that you actually delivered the message so he will reply my witnesses are Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his followers thereupon you muslims the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said will be brought and you will bear witness against the people of Nuh alayhi salam now the question is the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he never saw Nuh alayhi salam delivering the message to the people isn't it so so how can he be called as a witness on the day of judgment how because he was informed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran Nuh alayhi salam is mentioned so many many times so the prophet sallallahu alayhi salam will inform he will witness to the fact that Nuh alayhi salam delivered the message when on the day of judgment so shahid meaning mukhbir what are the two meanings of mukhbir first of all one who informs people about Allah his oneness a witness to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his tawheed one who informs people about what Allah has revealed and secondly one who will inform about people on the day of judgment that the message was delivered to them and we see that this responsibility is laid upon who as well on the muslim ummah that they are also to continue on the footsteps of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and inform people about what Allah has revealed inform people about the oneness of Allah because they have to bear witness on the day of judgment in surah al-baqara ayah 143 we learn وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ we have made you a just community so that you can be witnesses over people on the day of judgment how can we be witnesses when we have not told people You understand? Only when you have told people, then can you become a witness on the day of judgment. Then can you testify against them. If you have not done your job, then how can you testify against them? So, it is the responsibility of the Muslim ummah, it is our responsibility that we have to believe in the message of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we have to pass it on because we will be called to bear witness on the day of judgment. And what's the second meaning? of shahid hakim what does it mean by that that inna arsalnaka shahidan that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been sent as a hakim meaning one who decided one who judged by what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him whatever decisions he made whatever judgments he made whatever he told people that was based on what on what allah had taught him on what allah had informed him oh. وَمُبَشِّرًا and also as a bearer of good news وَنَذِيرًا and also as a warner we have sent you as a shahid we have sent you as a mubashir and we have sent you as a nadir who is a mubashir? who is a mubashir? one who gives good news now in order to convey good news or conveying of good news rather you need four things what four things first of all you need the mubashir one who delivers the good news what else do you need mubashir who is a mubashir the one who is receiving the good news the recipient of the good news so who is a mubashir the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is the mubashir the people whom he was sent to his ummah Now after the mubashir besides the mubashir what else do you need mubashir bihi the good news itself that what is the good news that is being informed of that is being given that is being delivered so what is the good news that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave of jannah of allah's pleasure of his reward 
forgiveness. Right? And fourthly, you need to know the sabab. What is the cause of attaining that good thing? Of which the good news is being given. Like when you tell someone, oh, this is going to happen, or you can get this. Now, what's the question they ask? How? How? If you tell someone, you can get this particular object for this much money only. What good news? 50% off. They're going to ask you where, when, how? How can I get there? Which place is it? So you need to know the sabab, the cause of being worthy of attaining the good thing that is being informed about. Right? So what was the cause of the Prophet ﷺ told us of? How do you become worthy of receiving that good news? How? Do you understand the question? Let me explain it again. That he told us that the good news is Jannah. Okay? How do you get Jannah? What's the sabab? What can take you there? Following Quran and Sunnah, righteous deeds, right? So he told us of many, many things that we can do so that we can get Allah's pleasure and His reward. He told us that we should do amal salih, that we should obey Allah, His Messenger, follow the Quran, follow the Sunnah, give sadaqah. So many ahadiths to tell us, do this and you'll enter Jannah, isn't it? Do this and you'll get the pleasure of Allah. So mubashir and also wa nadira. Now again, for the nadir, what do you need? Four things again. So who was the nadir? Who was the munzir? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Who is the munzar? Who did he warn? Who is the warning for? The people whom he was sent to. But in particular, the warning is for who? Those who don't believe in him. Those who disobey. Those who deny. What is the munzar bihi? What is it that he warned us of? Hellfire, punishment, Allah's displeasure, His retribution. And what is it that he told us leads to that mundarbi? Disobedience, denial, ma'asiyah, kufr, shirk, so on and so forth. So, Ya ayyuhan nabiyyu, inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadira. And also, وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ بِإِذْنِهِ And one who invites to Allah by His permission, وَسِرَاجَ مُنِيرًا And an illuminating lamp. Another quality of the Prophet ﷺ, دَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ Who is da'i? One who calls, one who invites. Right? From da'a yad'u. Now again, for a da'i to do his job, you need four things. First of all, you need the person, the da'i. Who is the da'i over here? The Prophet ﷺ. Second thing that you need is mad'u. Who did he call? Who did he invite? The people that he was sent to. Isn't it? He was told to start with who? With his family. وَأَنزِرَ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ And after that, لِتُنذِرَ أُمَّ الْقُرَى وَمَنْ حَوْلَهَا All the people. Right? رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ So da'i into who? Who is a mad'u? All people. He was sent to call who? Invite who? All people. Thirdly, who was he calling people to? What do we learn from here? وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ He called people to Allah. And fourthly, what is the sabab that he informed us of that leads us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? His pleasure. What is the sabab? Following his teachings. Following his orders. Doing what the Prophet ﷺ told us to. So, وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى Allah And a caller to Allah. This is something that we should notice over here. He did not call people to His worship. No, never. He did not call people to worship of other than Allah. He did not call people to a particular personality, to a particular ideology. No. He called people to who? Allah. To the worship and submission before who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Biiznihi by His permission. By whose permission? Allah's permission. Meaning you can only call people to Allah when Allah allows you to do so. Now what does it mean by this biiznihi? Izn, remember, is of two types. 
Izn of Allah is of two types. First is kawni and second is shari. Kawni when Allah allows for something to happen and shari when in terms of deen it's permissible. And over here, bi'idnihi, both are implied. Both are relevant. That he was told to call people to Allah. So this is why it was shari izn. And secondly, kawni izn, that only by the permission of Allah, by his tawfiq, by his taysir, can you call people to Allah. If Allah facilitates it for you, if Allah makes it easy for you, possible for you, only then you can call people. وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ بِإِذْنِهِ وَسِرَاجًا مُنِيرًا Another characteristic of the Prophet ﷺ, a radiant lamp, an illuminating lamp. Siraj is from the root letters, سِين رَا جِيم And Siraj literally is something that is very beautiful. It's used for husn, for zina, for beauty, adornment. And if you look at a lamp, what is it a symbol of? Of beauty. Many times people light candles. Why? Just for the purpose of beautification. Isn't it so? There is no need to have more light. There is enough light already. But still lamps will be lit simply for the purpose of beautification. And sarj from the same root is used for the saddle of a horse. There is a shir, a verse of poetry, in which it has been said that, وَأَعَزُّ مَكَانٍ فِي الدُّنَا أَسَّرْجُ سَابِحٍ That the most honorable place in this world is the saddle of a swift horse. That if you're sitting on the saddle of a swift horse, that's the most honorable place for you to be on. Why? Because when a person is riding a swift horse, how does he look? Very impressive. Isn't it? And especially if that horse is running, fi sabilillah. That is, a'azzu. That's most honorable. A'azzu makani. And it continues that وَخَيْرُ جَلِيسٍ فِي الزَّمَانِ كِتَابٌ And the best friend at all times is what? A book. So, سَرْج is what? The saddle of the horse. Okay? And سِرَاج is used for a lamp. And it is generally used for such a lamp that is lit with oil. So it's extremely bright. It brightens the surroundings as well. It's illuminating. And this is further emphasized by Sirajam Munira. Because what is Munir? One that gives nur. One that spreads nur. One that gives light. Enlightening. Illuminating. So it's brilliant itself. It's shining itself. And it also brightens the surroundings. So the Prophet ﷺ, how is he described over here? Sirajam Munira. A brilliant, radiant, illuminating lamp. When do you need a lamp? Where there is darkness. Isn't it? So, it illuminates the surroundings. It shows you what's there, what you should do, what you should not do. And similarly, the Prophet ﷺ as well, with his coming, what happened? People came to know of what they should do, what they should avoid. The Prophet ﷺ radiated hidayah, guidance. He radiated irshad. So was siraja munira and a radiant lamp. What do we learn from this ayah? First of all, we see that the Prophet ﷺ is described as wada'iyan ilallah. Which shows that a person, when he is calling people to the deen, should he be calling people to a particular personality? To a particular individual? Follow this person. You have to love him. You have to obey him only. And then you'll be successful. Is it that a particular personality should be highlighted? A particular individual should be highlighted? No. Who should people be called to? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because many times what happens? When people are working for the deen, their focus becomes making a particular personality shine forth or making a particular name shine forth but the objective of the true dari is what? that people should come closer to Allah and we see that this is what the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did and this is what behooves his followers as well we learn in Surah Ali Imran Ayah 79 that مَا كَانَ لِبَشَرٍ أَن يُؤْتِيَهُ اللَّهُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحُكْمَ وَالنُّبُوَّةَ ثُمَّ يَقُولَ لِلنَّاسِ كُونُوا عِبَادًا لِي مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ 
وَلَاكِنْ كُونُوا رَبَّانِيِّينَ It is not possible for a human prophet that Allah should give him the scripture and authority and prophethood and then he would say to the people, be servants to me. Instead of Allah. But instead what would he say? Be pious scholars of the Lord. Kunu Rabbaniyin. And this is the reason why when the Prophet ﷺ was opposed, when he was hurt, did he give up? He didn't. Because he was calling people to who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're calling people to yourself and they mock at you, they make fun of you, then you will get discouraged. And you'll say forget about it. If you're calling people to yourself and you criticize, then what happens? You get discouraged. But if you're calling people to Allah and people criticize you, they oppose you, they don't support you, will you give up? No. This is the reason for sincerity. When a person is calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the concern of the true da'i is not to highlight himself, but his concern is what? To call people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also we learn from this ayah that whatever the Prophet ﷺ informed us of, anything that he taught us of, that takes us closer to who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he was da'iyan ila Allah. So each time a person follows the command of the Prophet ﷺ, he is going closer to who? Allah. He is attaining the pleasure of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, fattabi'uni, yuhbibkum Allah. When you follow the Prophet, Allah will love you. Because whatever the Prophet ﷺ is telling you, it's taking you closer to who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he was, وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ بِإِذْنِهِ By his permission. And this shows to us another lesson, that the duty of inviting people to Allah, this task of inviting people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, cannot be performed except with the Izan of Allah. Except by his tawfiq, by his help. So if a person does manage to call some people to Allah, he should not feel arrogant over there. Who should he thank? Allah. Who should he be grateful to? Allah. Because it's only by his permission. If Allah did not give him tawfiq, he would not be able to do it at all. وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ بِإِذْنِهِ if you have managed to instill the love of Allah in the hearts of people, the fear of Allah in the hearts of people, it's not because of you. It's because Allah made it possible for you. Therefore, never be proud of it. Never become arrogant about it. Be grateful for it, but don't be arrogant about it. Also, we see that the Prophet ﷺ, who was he? Sirajan Munira, a radiant lamp. What does it show to us? That through the Prophet ﷺ, because of him, light has spread to the entire world, removing the darknesses. The time before the Prophet ﷺ came, what is that time described as? Jahiliyyah. Ignorance. And what is ignorance? Zulmah. Darkness. So, before the coming of the Prophet ﷺ, people were in darkness. Those were the dark ages. When people didn't know about Allah. When they weren't preparing for Jannah. When they were going against what Allah likes. That is dark ages. That is real darkness. And when the Prophet ﷺ came, he told the people, and as a result there is light. Also this shows to us that the guidance and the knowledge that the Prophet ﷺ brought, what is that? Light. And anything that contradicts the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ, what is that? Darkness. One is the statement of the Prophet, the sunnah of the Prophet, and the other is the statement of someone else that contradicts the statement of the Prophet ﷺ. Some way that contradicts the way of the Prophet ﷺ. What is better? What is better? The way of the Prophet ﷺ. And anything that contradicts his command, his instructions, his way, that is darkness, no matter how impressive we might find it. We understand. Because sometimes we think following the sunnah is what? Going backwards. It's not. It is in fact something that is enlightenment. 
and going against the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, that's going back in the dark ages. That's going to jahiliyyah. We also see in this ayah that the Prophet ﷺ, his words, his teachings, whatever he taught, what is that? Light. Because he was siraja munira. He was like a radiant lamp. So whatever he said, whatever he taught, what is that? Light. So a heart that contains the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that heart is illuminated. The person who follows a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, that person is illuminated. And a person who does not follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, is he illuminated? Is he enlightened? He's not enlightened. The person who does not know the words of the Prophet ﷺ, the askar that he recited, the way he glorified Allah, the way he prayed to Allah. Is he in light? No. Does he have light? No. Light is with what? The sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So we see in these ayat that seven characteristics of the Prophet ﷺ are mentioned over here. What are they? First of all, that he is a Nabi. Secondly, Rasul. Thirdly, Shahid. Fourthly, Mubashir, Nadir, Da'i, and Siraj. These are the characteristics of the Prophet ﷺ. So whenever you have to define him, describe him, somebody asks you, who was he? This is how you describe him. This is his description. And we see that Imam Ahmad recorded that Atta ibn Yasar said that he met Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. And he said to him, Tell me about the description of the Messenger of Allah in the Torah. How is he described in the Torah? In the books that you had, how was he described over there? He said, yes, by Allah. He was described in the Torah with some of the qualities in which he was described in the Quran. And this is the Arabic of his description in the Torah. That, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِي إِنَّا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ شَاهِدًا وَمُبَشِّرًا وَنَذِيرًا وَحَرِزًا لِلْأُمِّيِّينَ فَأَنْتَ عَبْدِي وَرَسُولِي سَمَّيْتُكَ الْمُتَوَكِّلِ لَيْسَ بِفَضْلٍ وَلَا غَلِيظٍ وَلَا سَخَّابٍ فِي الْأَسْوَاقِ وَلَا يَدْفَعِ السَّيِّئَةَ بِالسَّيِّئَةَ وَلَكِنْ يَعْفُو وَيَصْفَحْ وَيَغْفِرْ وَلَنْ يَقْبِضُهُ اللَّهُ حَتَّى يُقِيمُ بِهِ الْمِلَّةَ الْعُوْجَاء بِأَنْ يَقُولُوا لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ فَيَفْتَحْ بِهَا أَعْيُنًا عُمْيًا وَآذَانًا صُمًّا وَقُلُوبًا غُلْفًا that, O oh Prophet, verily we have sent you as a witness and a bearer of good news and a warner, a savior to the illiterate, to the ummiyin, to the illiterate. You are my servant and my messenger and I have called you al-mutawakkil. Who is al-mutawakkil? The one who relies. You are not harsh or severe or noisy in the marketplaces. You do not repay evil with evil, but you overlook and forgive. And Allah will not take your soul until you make straight those who have deviated. And they say, La ilaha illallah. Sirajan munira. Da'iyan illallah. Words with which blind eyes, deaf ears, and sealed hearts will be opened. And this is also recorded in Bukhari. وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And give good news to the believers. What good news? بِأَنَّ لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ Fadlan kabira That they will have from Allah great bounty. Give this good news because you are a mubashir. So give good news to who? To those people who have believed. And what good news should you give them? Bi anna lahum that indeed for them is min Allah from Allah fadlan kabira. A great bounty. Meaning a great reward. Fadl. What is fadl? Favor, isn't it? An extra favor, something that is not mandatory on the giver to give. It's not necessary for him to give it. If he gives it, it's fadl on his part. It's extra. It's a favor. So fadlan, a favor, that is kabir, that is great. It's not ordinary. So give this good news to the believers. And what is that fadlan kabira? What is that fadlan kabira? Jannah. Because Jannah, it's full of bounty. It's full of fadl. 
It's full of favors and blessings. And also, this is understood as that be anna lahum min Allahi fadlan kabira that they have fadl kabir over who? Over the rest of the people. They have a great virtue, excellence. Over who? Over the rest of the people. Because of what? Because of their iman. And who gives them this great virtue? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bi anna lahum min Allahi fadlan kabira. We learn in Surah Al-Shura, Ayah 22. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فِي رَوْضَاتِ الْجَنَّاتِ That those people who believe and do righteous good deeds, they will be in the gardens, in the rawdat of jannat, in lush regions of the gardens of paradise. لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ And they will have whatever they desire with their Lord. ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَضْلُ الْكَبِيرِ And that is the great bounty. So in Surah Al-Shura, what do we learn? Al-Fadl Al-Kabir is Jannah. And the reward therein from Allah. And the fulfillment of every desire, every wish. And we see that the Prophet ﷺ gave this good news to the believers. وَلَا تُطِعِ الْكَافِرِينَ And do not obey the disbelievers. وَالْمُنَافِقِينَ Or the hypocrites. Don't obey them. Don't listen to them. When? Don't listen to them with regards to anything? What does it mean by this? When they tell you to do something that contradicts what Allah has told you to do. So don't obey them there. Now who is a kafir? A kafir is any person who commits kufr. Whether this kufr is of juhud or this kufr is of istikbar. What does juhud mean? Kufr of juhud. Kufr of juhud is takdeeb, denial. That when a person refuses to accept while knowing that even though he knows about it, still he refuses to accept. Like for example, who comes to your mind? Like for instance, Fir'aun. Right? He knew, but still he refused. And the second type of kufr is of istikbar, of arrogance. To be too arrogant to obey, to be too arrogant to submit. Like the kufr of Iblis. He knew, but still he refuse to accept. So, a kafir is someone who commits kufr, whether that kufr is of jihud or it is of istikbar. Now, the person who shows his kufr, he is called kafir. Right? And a person who hides his kufr, who is he? Munafiq. So, وَلَا تُطِعِ الْكَافِرِينَ وَالْمُنَافِقِينَ Don't obey the kafirin or the munafiqin. Who is a munafiq? Munafiq is one who appears to be a believer, but in the heart there is kufr. And munafiq is someone who is double-faced because it's from nafiqa. And who is a nafiqa? A mouse that lives in a tunnel. That when there is ease in Islam, when there is convenience, go with the flow. When there is difficulty, leave. وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَى شَيَاطِينِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لَا تُطِعِ الْكَافِرِينَ وَالْمُنَافِقِينَ Don't obey these people. Don't listen to them. Was it ever possible that he would listen to them? No. So what's the purpose of saying this? Okay, to remind the rest of us as well. And also to clarify to him that stay like this. Never ever obey them. وَلَا تُطِعِ الْكَافِرِينَ have dawam on this, have sabat on this, that never ever obey them, never ever listen to them. Wadar adahum and leave their injury, ignore their hurt. Leave it. Disregard it. Da from the root letters, Wow Dal Ain. What does Wada'a mean? To leave something. Al Wada'a. What does that mean? Farewell. Correct? Wada'a means farewell. You leave something. You leave someone and you go away. And in particular, dar is to leave something in a peaceful way. That not you have a fight, an argument, and then you walk out very angrily. No. This is not what dar is. Dar is to leave something in a peaceful way. And what is adha? Hurt. Injury. And it's such hurt that is felt, that is experienced by who? By a living being. Like for example, if you 
hit the table, would it feel any hurt? No. But if a person says something harsh to another, will he feel it? Of course. Right? So, وَدَعَذَاهُمْ Leave their other. What does it mean by this, leave their other? What was the other of the kafirin and the munafiqeen? Their other was in the form of their opposition, in the form of their mockery, right? In the form of their raising objections at the Prophet ﷺ. Because if you notice the context of these ayat, the Prophet ﷺ got married to Zainab anha. And this was like going against the tradition of the Arabs, committing a munka. So the munafiqeen, they had a chance to talk a lot. The kafirin, they had a chance to talk a lot. What does Allah say? Da'adahum. Just leave their other. Meaning, just ignore what they say. Don't pay any attention to that. Disregard it completely. And also da'adahum gives a sense of don't worry about it. Let them say whatever they're saying. You don't worry about it. Don't let them hurt you. Don't get bothered by what they say. Wadar adahum. Just leave it. Watawakal ala Allah and rely upon Allah. Trust upon Him. He will take care of you. Wakafa billahi wakila and sufficient is Allah as a disposer of affairs. If you trust upon Him, He is sufficient to aid you. He is sufficient to help you. No matter how much these people oppose you, no matter how many objections they raise against you, they cannot harm you. يُرِيدُونَ لِيُطْفِئُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ They try to extinguish the nur of Allah, the religion of Allah. They oppose it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is sufficient to fulfill His nur, to complete His nur. He will complete this religion, He will perfect this religion, no matter how much people oppose. Now you see, in these ayat, we learned about the marriage of the Prophet ﷺ with Zainab anha. And people raise a lot of objections concerning his marriages. Isn't it so? A lot of objections. They try to say extremely offensive things about the Prophet ﷺ. But what do we see? That the Prophet ﷺ is told, وَدَعَذَاهُمْ وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا Just remember that every marriage of the Prophet ﷺ was for a reason. For a reason. And I'm sure you can find many, many resources which tell you about what was the reason behind all of those marriages. It was a means of completing their religion, perfecting their religion. Like for instance, the marriage with Zainab Latilan, that was a means of completing their religion, perfecting their religion. How? That marriage to the ex wife of the adopted son is permissible. Right? Similarly, his marriages with the women of the Quraysh, right? What was the reason behind that? To strengthen the relationship so that people would not come in opposition against the Prophet. ﷺ. So it was a means of perfecting the religion. So, tawakkal ala Allah, trust upon Him. No matter how much people oppose, no matter how much they mock and ridicule, wakafa billahi wakila, and Allah is sufficient. He will take care of you. He will fulfill this deen. He will complete it. Can we listen to the recitation? That these are the characteristics that he should possess. He should be calling people to Allah, giving good news, giving warning as well. Not calling people to himself, but to Allah. And then when there is difficulty, when people are calling to something other than what Allah has revealed, don't listen to them. They hurt you, ignore that. Don't worry about it. You find it difficult to convey? Tawakkal ala Allah. Wa kafa billahi wa kila. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.